The U.S. rifle caliber .30 M1, designed by John C. Garand, was an impressive feat of small arms engineering at the time of its adoption and became an icon of the U.S. infantryman from World War II to the Korean conflict and beyond. One of the design features to continue from the first M1S to later rifles was the rear sight assembly, which went through several minor changes and modifications from the M1's adoption to the M14 and today's M1A. The M1 rear sight uses a single peep aperture within a robust housing, with a knob on the left for elevation adjustment and a knob on the right for windage. Both knobs have specific measurement stops they interact with on the receiver, and adjustments have audible clicks, with each click representing 1 MOA, or 1 inch of adjustment on target at 100 yards. The rear sight design is relatively simple, with no more than 9 parts on the initial version. This includes an elevation pinion, elevation CAP, elevation CAP screw, base, cover, aperture piece, windage knob, compressing spring, detent, and NUT. The base acts as the housing for the aperture and knobs while the cover keeps out debris and secures the base to the action. The elevation pinion slides into the base and through the other side, with the windage knob sliding onto it and screwing into the base. Some features like the base, cover, and aperture underwent minor simplifications for ease of production. From adoption to the first year of U.S. involvement in World War II, the M1 rear sight remained largely unchanged. The early production parts were finely machined, including the knobs with checkered edges, the base and aperture with part numbers, and the cover with a part number and no reinforcing indents stamped in. The elevation pinion on these early sights, known as a short pinion, is flush with the edge of the windage knob with 6 to 40 NF threads. The nut that screwed onto the pinion on top of the compressing spring and detent is also flush with the windage knob, earning it the nickname of flush nut. The elevation cap on the pinion variations up to the end of World War II is removable, allowing the user to find the desired elevation setting for a specific range and then reattach it to the pinion at the correct graduation. These caps feature an arrow with the words, battle range, marked on the side, pointing to the 300-yard mark. Changes to the rear sight design began with U.S. involvement in World War II. Parts were simplified to require less machining. By mid-1942, some simplification had already taken place on the sights. The checkering on the knobs, except the elevation cap in some cases, was swapped in favor of knurling which was faster to machine yet still provided adequate grip. Part numbering was deleted and machining was simplified on the aperture, base, and cover. At this time, the flush nut on the M1 Garand rear sight began causing problems. It required a specific tool to tighten it down and could be worked loose by adjusting the sight or completely unscrew. This led to the adjustment knobs becoming loose and the sight losing its zero. To address this flaw, a locking bar was introduced to replace the flush nut. The first iteration, known as the Type 1, had issues with being completely unscrewed off the pinion. This led to the introduction of the Type 2 locking bar, which had a longer pinion and more threads extending past the windage knob to prevent it from being completely unscrewed. The Type 2 locking bar was eventually replaced by the slightly simplified Type 3, which used the same pinion and thread pitch but had squared edges and coarser machining. The T-105 was introduced to address the initial problem with the flush nut, while still allowing for adjustments on the fly. It includes a redesigned pinion and knobs, with a compressing spring relocated into the elevation knob. A large screw on the elevation knob controls the tightness of the sight, while the windage knob has a captured nut for securing it to the pinion. The T-105 was implemented after the war, replacing older designs in new M1 production during the 1950s. It was also used to replace older sets on rifles that were re-arsenaled in the post-war period. The T-105 design was carried over to the M14 gun and is completely interchangeable between the M1 and M14. 
The only difference is the range increments on the elevation knob for the M14 were changed from yards to meters. This design is also found on new production M1A rifles from Springfield Armory today.